These are Bora voices. Hey all, Halloween is coming, which for a 50-something English teacher means I'll be handing out candy at my front door while screaming at three dogs to stop barking. But here at Bora High, Halloween means it's time to crank up the scary a bit as we look into the various nooks and crannies and underground haunts of our school. These are Bora Voices. We've brought in Miss Miller for this episode. She's our creative writing teacher, and she's here to tell us a little bit about a project that she had her kids do for this very podcast. I'm Miss Miller, creative writing teacher and new teacher to Bora this year. The creative writing students were asked to write a piece of flash fiction, 100 words exactly, no more, no less. And here are a few of your scariest ones. My mother's eyes filled with curiosity every time I came back from the shed. The shed was my sanctuary, the place where I worked, the place of wonder, astonishment, and freedom. She didn't see it that way. She was mortified. She screamed and cried at my masterpieces. I was a monster, she thought. A sweet eight-year-old boy, a monster. She thought it wasn't my fault. My mind must have been poisoned, but wasn't it always? She said that I could get help. I don't want help. So I made another masterpiece. She was my favorite. She screamed the most. The white jacket clung to her frame as she traipsed through the hallway. Her new companions' faces peered at her in interest, their gazes curious and predatory. They would soon know not to mess with her. The charges added up, one by one, breaking and entering, trespassing, theft, murder. As the judge read them, she had just smiled, proud of her achievements, knowing that even now, nothing they did would take away from her success. So she sat in her padded cell, straight jacket wrapped around her arms, and laughed. She was going to rule this place with an iron fist. Valley Visions is the district magazine for any art pieces, poetry, photography, painting, drawing, ceramics, short stories, personal essays, and mixed media. For more information or to submit your work by December 10th, talk to your language arts teacher or find Miss Miller in room 212. These are Bora Voices. Hey, this is Heather. Hi, Heather. Miss Pyrus, this is Patrick Rose with the Prep Period Gold Call. Hello. Hi, do you have a minute to chat? Sure. Fantastic. Um, first of all, tell us how long you've been at Bora and what you teach. Let's see. This is my eighth year here at Bora High School, and I teach theater arts levels three, four, and five. So intro, and then we have an intermediate technical focus class, and then advanced acting. Um, and I also teach speech communication. Okay, what's your favorite? Do you like theater or speech? Well, I don't dislike speech, but I'd say my my um, my passion lies in the theater arts. There you go. What's your favorite play in the world? Ever, oh my god! Of all time. Oh. I know. I'm putting you on the. I'm putting you on the spot here. Let's see. Hmm. Oh man, that's so hard. All right, we'll loop, we'll, we'll loop back to it at the end okay, so you can okay. have time to think. But in the meantime, tell us a little bit about Wales. You spent some time in Wales. I did. When I was a senior in college, I got to study abroad in Wales. And um, I will admit, I mostly chose that because um, they speak English there. But they also speak Welsh, obviously. Um, so I went there. I did take a Welsh course. Uh, the campus was so cool because some of the buildings were very castle-esque. And it was in this is that a, little... Well, is, is that a, a technical term? Castle-esque? Oh, ab absolutely. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> um, the college is in this cool little village called Carmarthen. And uh, the university was up on a hill that overlooked the, the town. It was just, it was a really neat experience. Um, and how long, you, how long were you there? I was only there a semester because it was my senior year, so I had to come back and graduate. Gotcha. Um, I wish I could have been there longer. but You ever uh, plan on going back? I would love to. It's so beautiful. Okay. 
Before that question, okay, just a reminder of the question, what's your favorite play of all time? Okay, so you're still thinking about that. I am. Um, tell us about Adam's Family is coming up. Tell us when and, and why you chose that to do and how we get tickets and all that good stuff. Right. Uh, so yes, the theater department and the choir department are collaborating on um, the musical The Adams Family, and we chose it because it's a really fun story, um, and uh, we're producing it around the time of Halloween, so it fit in with that time of year really well, because it's pretty spooky. Um, well, it's actually not, but it has a, a spooky feel to it here and there. Um, the, Hulk. the characters are pretty complex in a very fun way. Um, I will say the music's pretty complicated. There's a lot of music going on, so we're working hard on that, and Ms. Ray is doing an awesome job. Um, and would and, my would my three year old be able to handle it, or would it uh, scare him to death? No, I don't think it would. It's really not scary at all. It just has some. Um, some ghost-like characters, okay. and there's tombstones, and, um, you know, at the Adams family, they don't perceive themselves as odd at all, which is what is so charming about the story. Correct. Um, everyone else thinks they're creepy and ghoulish, but they just think they're regular people. And when is that showing? It is November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd at 7 o'clock, and there's also a Two o'clock matinee. That on one I could Saturday. probably take the kid to. Maybe the two o'clock will do. Cool. That would be fantastic. Okay, back to the original question. Okay. Putting you back on the spot before I let you go. Um, what is your favorite um, musical? I guess it can be a musical or play of okay. all time. Okay. Um, now, would you like me to? I could answer this a couple of ways. It could be that I've produced or that I've seen. Do do, do both. Okay. Um, let's see. The, my favorite musical of all time that's actually really easy for me is Into the Woods. Into the Woods. Never even heard of it. Uh, Stephen Sondheim. It's amazing. All right. I'm looking it up. Okay. So good. Um, that I've produced, you know, they all kind of have a special place in my heart. But um, I think the one that was really smooth from beginning to end and putting together was... Xanadu. <laughs> Xanadu, really? <clears throat> it was great. Everything just fell into place for us with that show. But they've all been really awesome. Well, fantastic. Thank you for your time. I won't waste any more of it. I know you got an upcoming show. Adam's Family, tell us when it is again. November 1, 2, 3. All right. We'll be looking it up. Appreciate you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. These are Bora voices. So what do you know about the tunnels under Bora? Well, I know there's a long history of these tunnels. Even when I went to school in the late 80s, people knew that they were underneath the building. Um, I know the city of Boise has some tunnels, and there are lots of stories about those. I'd like to think that Boris Tunnels might be the perfect place to hide bad students. <laughs> or maybe even retired teachers that never want to leave. Maybe they hang out there. I don't know. I've never seen them. One of the creepier things about our school, besides whatever bacteria are hanging out in Mr. Tipping's petri dishes, are the underground tunnels that connect the various outlying buildings on campus. I had the chance to go down into the bowels of the school with head custodian Steve Thrall and take a gander down the spookily lit passageways. It was like a steampunk horror novel setting down there. I've looked down into the tunnel, but I've never gone down there before to see what it looks like. The tunnels themselves are not too bad in that you can you can kind of stand in them. Yeah. There's a lot of clicking noises. And... Oh wow! Check that out. You know, there's a rumor that in the '70s, one of the assistant principals and kids got in trouble, but so make them come down here, and they turn off the lights and close the door. <laughs> That's no. a rumor. See, these are the call space ones. Oh, okay. Ooh, yeah. Go around, and there should be lights, but I'm in here all burnt out. Uh, these you grew up with, like a creeper. Freaky. So, I mean, these, as you can see now when you get there, it's branches off. Right. So, 
And so that goes like, that's the main hall. Heads off underneath the main hall, is that right? Well, the goal, go, at some point it goes, yeah, down the hall. And so they just like break off each one. If you go on the outside of the building, you'll see those grates, the boxes kind of randomly on the outside uh, that have doors to get into the crawl space one. Right. So basically all the conduit of everything goes through here. Power, the power steam lines. And, that was the main thing, you know, the steam lines from right, place. Right. So when the so when the boiler group goes down, the, that's over in the four hundred wing, right? Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. That that's the boiler for all the original building. Gotcha. So you know, like come that transition from summer to winter, uh, the new gym might have heat. Auditorium might have heat, oh. but if they haven't brought the boilers up, the main building doesn't have heat. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, it's really interesting. Nice creepy sounds with the water running <laughs> all the time. Well, that's sewage too. Probably. Yeah, oh, I figured. <laughs> that's everything. Well, that's just something. Well, I, I've been down, I mean, I, when we were trying to trace, uh, or in fact, I had to repair the lights going down. Yeah. Uh, but we, uh, Trying to trace cable TV connections. Oh and stuff. yeah, that runs through here. That's so cool. Like I say, it's not it's not real bad. It's kind of we're I mean it's kind of like this when maybe every other light's out or something. And yeah, and you get the cobwebs across if you haven't if we've been down here in a while. I mean, it's definitely not for the. Hearted. Yeah, or claustrophobic. Claustrophobic. Thing. Is this the switch for the lights going this way? Well, no. It was. Okay. It is now. Oh, okay. There's a breaker upstairs. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I'm assuming that they weren't always fluorescent lights in here. But yeah, well, I, yeah, I would imagine they were. Looks like the. One yeah. That'd well, because the rest of the hall. Well, the rest of it still is. Still the old. Oh yeah, I see it. I see the light bulb up there. Between and you see the cobweb. Yeah. Well, it's about as creepy as I imagined. <laughs> yeah, cool. it's. I mean, it's. It's not, just interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't know how many miles total of tunnels there are. Because I've only been. I've not been in any of the uh, crawl ones. Yeah. Let's get a picture of the old creepy equipment. <laughs> that all still works, so oh, yeah. most of the, most of the time. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah. Well, let's see what. Well, I've got I've got one one of the district guys just convinced that there's a cougar running around down there. Because <laughs> he and I were tracing some line or something. And, Found the paw print that he says is too big to be a cat. Oh. So he thinks it's a cougar. I mean, if it, if it was, it's gone. They all know it's around. Okay, whatever. Maybe it's a lion. Yeah, it's not money. <laughs> a boar lion. Boar lion. lion. Well, thanks. That was a good tour. These are Bora Voices. And now, here's your senior moment. All right, my name is Danny, and this is the senior moment. Today, I'm going to be talking about the new law in Virginia where 12-year-olds and or older will get possible jail time, misdemeanor charge, and or a $100 fine for trick-or-treating. This, I think, is a little insane because trick-or-treating should be for anyone, and plus, what if you have a little sibling and you want to get candy too? Like, this makes no sense. And I also think this brings up a good question about what about the kids who are mentally challenged? What if they aren't ready to grow up and, like, be a quote-unquote adult because that's that's not fun the transition stage of growing up that's always never been fun 
And plus, Halloween is a time for everyone to have fun and to let loose and be who you want to be. And if you want to be a little kid, then be a little kid. Eat some candy. Go run around. But also, I understand the other side of this because adults don't want to have their house TP'd or egged by some punk kids. And not like rocker punk. Those are cool. <laughs> but I think this just needs to be addressed for the sake of safety. I understand older kids aren't as nice and kind of mean on Halloween because they think it's fun or something. I think it should be fun for everyone and that little kids to like 15 year olds should be able to go trick or treat. I feel like if you're in the spirit and you have a costume, you should be able to do it. If you're just walking around with no costume and just a pillowcase, like, at least put some effort, like, put on a mask. <laughs> and I just feel like the jail time is ridiculous. These are kids we're talking about. And even if they aren't kids, why would they need jail time for walking around their neighborhood trying to get candy? Like, I don't think that's too wrong. Everyone wants candy. And if you, like, what if someone doesn't have the money to go to the store and buy a bag of candy? Like, this is a great day for everyone. And so, there's my rant. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Halloween edition of the Bora Pridecast. Remember, if you have ideas for things we should be covering, please let us know. 